The Saint Camin was the second French tank to enter service during the First World War, with 400 manufactured from April 1917 to July 1918. Although not a tank by a strict definition of a heavily armored turreted vehicle, it is generally accepted and described as such in accounts of early tank development. It takes its name from the commune of Saint Camin, where its manufacturer's company des Forges et des Series de la Marine et de Corps (FAMH) were based. Born of the commercial rivalry existing with the makers of the Schneider CA-1 tank, the Saint Camin was an underpowered and fundamentally inadequate design. Its principal weakness was its hold caterpillar tracks. They were much too short in relation to the vehicle's length and weight, 23 tons. Later models attempted to rectify some of the tank's original flaws by installing wider and stronger track shoes, thicker frontal armor and the more effective 75mm MLE 1897 field gun. Altogether 400 St. Kamen tanks were built, including 48 unarmed Kaisen tanks. The St. Kamen tanks remained engaged in various actions until October 1918, belatedly becoming more effective since combat had moved out of the trenches and onto open ground. Eventually, the St. Kamen tanks were scheduled to be entirely replaced by imported British heavy tanks. In January 1915, the French arms manufacturer Schneider sent out its chief designer, Eugene Brillier, to investigate tracked tractors from the American Holt Company, at that time participating in a test program in England. The original French project was to provide mobility to mechanical wire cutting machines of the Breton Pretot type. On his return Brillier, who had earlier been involved in designing armored cars for Spain, convinced the company management to initiate studies on the development of a tractor blindé et armé, armored and armed tractor, based on the baby Holt chassis, two of which were ordered. Experiments on the Holt Caterpillar tracks started in May 1915 at the Schneider plant with a 56 kilowatt, 75 horsepower, wheel steered model and the 34 kilowatt, 45 horsepower, all Caterpillar baby Holt, showing the superiority of the latter. On the 16th of June, new experiments followed in front of the President of the French Republic, and on the 10th of September for Commander Ferris, an officer who had been involved in the study, an ultimate abandonment, of the Lavavasur tank project in 1908. In early 1916, the first prototype of the Schneider tank was assembled in an army workshop. It featured tracks from the American-made Holt Caterpillar tractors that were already used in France for towing heavy artillery. Private Pierre Lescure designed the fighting compartment. Lieutenant Fouché lengthened the tracks to improve trench crossing ability. In this early form the prototype of the Schneider was called Tractor A. Not for security reasons, but because nobody knew exactly how to call such vehicles, the French word char was not yet applied to tanks. Eugene Brillier, the chief designer at Schneider, rejected this Tractor A prototype. Instead he had invented a tail for his own tank's chassis thus providing the same trench crossing ability but for less overall weight and length. While Brillier began to assemble this second prototype which was to become the Schneider CA-1, the arms manufacturer forges at a series de la Marine at de Court, aka, FAMH, based at saint Camin, Loire, was given an order for 400 tanks by the French government, a political move prompted by General Morit of the Army, Service Automobile. Saint Camin intended to build a tank that would be partly similar to the Schneider. Brillier refused to share his patents for free, and Saint Camin refused to pay. As a result, the Forges et Aciaries de la Marine et de Honcourt company, being unable to replicate certain patented details, notably the tail, of the new Schneider tank, developed its own proprietary design. The Char Saint Camin, it included a Crochat Collardo gasoline electric transmission a traction system already used on railcars in service with the French railways. Furthermore, the freedom to design a heavier and larger tracked vehicle gave St. Camin the opportunity to upstage the Schneider company. It did this by installing on its Char St. Camin, a more powerful, full-size 75mm field gun plus four Hotchkiss machine guns instead of the two machine guns present on the Schneider tank. St. Camin's technical director was Colonel Emile Romilha, an artillery officer who had become dissatisfied over the insufficient reward he had received for helping design the famous Canon de 75 Medel 753 field gun as well as the Medel 1904 155mm, Romilha, Howitzer. Following his departure from the French state arsenal system, APX, and joining saint Camin, Romilha adapted a Mondragon designed 75mm field gun for production for the Mexican army. It was the proprietary Canon de 75mm TR Saint Camin, Medel 1915, 
designed to fire the regular French 75mm ammunition. The French government had already made a commitment in May 1915 to purchase the St. Camin 75mm gun. It is unclear whether the guns for the St. Camin tanks were taken from existing stocks of St. Camin guns or new production. Colonel Ramilha, who had a direct financial interest in selling his company's gun, induced the Ministry of War to specify that the new St. Camin tank would also mount the St. Camin made 75mm. In so doing Ramilha had also upstaged the Schneider CA-1 tank which could only be fitted with a smaller Schneider made fortress gun firing a 75mm reduced charge ammunition. To accommodate a regular length and full-size 75mm field gun, a hull longer than on the Schneider tank was essential. The earliest St. Camin prototype, a tracked vehicle longer and heavier than the Schneider tank was first demonstrated to the French military in April 1916. When Colonel Jean-Baptiste Eugène Estienne, who had taken the initiative to create the French tank arm, learned that an order for 400 additional tanks had been passed on April 8, 1916, he was at first quite elated. When it later became apparent that they would be of a different type, Estienne was shocked and wrote, I am painfully surprised that an order has been launched of this importance without asking the opinion of the only officer who, at the time, had undertaken a profound study of the technical and military aspects involved and who had brought the supreme commander to the decision to take this path, towards a tank arm. As a result of Ramilha's manipulations, the new tank had become a rather cumbersome and underpowered vehicle. It lacked a rotating turret, instead using a large overhanging front compartment housing the long 75mm gun protruding from the nose. It should be pointed out that all French 75mm field guns at the time used the same method of traverse control. The whole gun carriage was moved from side to side pivoted on the end of the trail by a worm gear arrangement on the axle of the gun. This meant that the St. Camin engineers had no option but to fit the whole gun into the fighting compartment. Within the forward fighting compartment and on the left was the driver also the vehicle commander. On the right a machine gunner operated the front Hotchkiss machine gun. This machine gunner was also responsible for the breech operation of the 75mm gun which he had to perform after pivoting on his seat to the left. A loader, referred to in some sources as the gunner, adjusted the gun's elevation, observing the target through a small hatch in the front of the tank, which left him vulnerable to enemy fire. Traversing the 75mm gun beyond the limits of traverse of the gun, 6 degrees for MLE 1897, required traversing the whole tank, and this was performed by the driver. A second fighting compartment at the back held one machine gunner next to the secondary driver's position, where the tank could also be driven backwards by the mechanic in an emergency. Between those two compartments stood in the open the gasoline engine and the electric generator. Narrow passageways on both sides of the engine connected the front and rear compartments. The passageways also held Hotchkiss positions, one on each side in front of the engine. Altogether, the St. Camond had four Hotchkiss M1914 machine gun positions. One in the front, one in the back and one on each side of the tank. Despite weighing 23 tons, the tank could manage a top speed of 12 kilometers per hour, 7.5 miles per hour. This speed was seldom achieved in the field as the long nose was prone to digging into the ground. The relatively high maximum speed on flat ground was made possible by the Croshaw Colardo, transmission which coupled a Panard Levasseur 4-cylinder 67 kilowatt, 90 horsepower, sleeve valve gasoline engine to an electric generator capable of giving an output of 260 amperes under 200 volts. The generator was connected to two separate electric motors, one for each track, thus permitting perfect gradual steering of the tank. Due to its short tracks and overextended body, the vehicle experienced major difficulties in crossing trenches and overcoming obstacles. This led to such negative reactions by the crews in training that a special mention was passed on to General Headquarters. Nobody wants to serve on the St. Camin. 2nd Lieutenant de Goyan, Principal St. Camin Driving Instructor at Marley, has publicly declared that it has become virtually impossible for him to continue to carry on and, since he is a member of Parliament, that he will request to have the whole matter placed on the next parliamentary agenda. Originally the crew of nine men was protected by 11 mm of steel armor on the sloping front and 17 mm on the sides. Later on, the addition of an extra layer of spaced 8.5 mm armor on the front improved protection. Beginning with the 151st vehicle, the roof was also redesigned with a double slope so that satchel charges and grenades would slide off. Concurrently, 
the original two observation turrets in front and on top were done away with and replaced by a single low-profile square turret permitting front and sides vision by the tank's driver, commander. With time, the tracks were also widened in two steps from 324mm to 412mm to lower their ground pressure. After St. Cammon tank No. 210 the more effective Model 1897 field gun was installed instead of Romilha's, profitable, 75mm St. Cammon gun. At about the same time barrel-like rollers were added underneath the front and rear of the tank to help crossing trenches. This improved version was later called, and officially, the Model 18. Production slowed down in March 1918, after at least 377 had been assembled, and ceased completely in July 1918. Initially, 48 St. Cammon tanks were modified as supply and recovery vehicles that could tow the lighter Schneider tanks. Their first action as a fighting vehicle took place at Lafoe Mill on May 5, 1917. 16 St. Cammon tanks were engaged there, several of them getting stuck in trenches, but only three were destroyed in combat. During the rest of the war, 12 groups in total were formed with St. Cammon tanks. In mid-1918, since combat had left the trenches for the open fields, it was used to engage German field gun batteries, Nachkampf battery and, at a distance with its 75mm cannon. The St. Kamen proved at last quite effective in this specialist assault gun role. The St. Kamen's final engagement in battle, with initially 16 tanks, took place in early October 1918, in support of the U.S. 1st Division near Montfaucon. As reported in Ralph Jones et al., 1933, in reference to this last engagement, the St. Cammon tanks were handicapped by damage to their tracks, by derailments, by the breakage of the caps of connecting rods on forward bogies and of track pins. By that time, the Renault FT tank had taken over the major role in the French tank force and had also been purchased by the American Expeditionary Forces in France. After the war 54 were rebuilt as ammunition carriers. The remainder were largely scrapped. However, at least one St. Cammon was retained as a memorial. There was one of the École des Chars at Versailles from 1919 to 1940 when the Germans presumably scrapped it along with the other tanks on display. There are unsubstantiated stories about Poland using the tank against the Red Army in 1920. If true, these specimens were in all probability not from the Soviet Army as the latter never had been supplied with them and the French expeditionary forces to Russia were only equipped with the Renault featuring the last St. Cammon tank remaining in existence, an improved mid-1918 model alongside other French tanks of World War I, Schneider CA-1 and Renault FT, is preserved at the Musée des Blindes at Sommer. It had survived, together with a Schneider CA-1 tank of the same vintage, at the Aberdeen Proving Grounds Ordnance Museum in Maryland, U.S., and was donated by the U.S. to the French government in 1987. Between 2015 and 2017 it was restored to running condition and repainted in a World War I camouflage scheme, at a cost of €120,000. It took part in various displays throughout 2017 to mark the centenary of the first use of tanks by the French army. A full-size replica in polystyrene foam, built by students of the Lycée Le Corbusier at Tourcoing, is on display outdoors at the Historial de la Grande Guerre Museum in Peron, France.